There is a weird malformed frog in Australia called the turtle frog. Is it a frog or a turtle? Both. Just kidding. It, it's not a turtle. It's just a frog. Uh, they're called a turtle frog because I guess some folks think their long flat back kind of looks like a turtle carapace. Some people call it a, a, a naked turtle, but it's, it's neither. It's a turtle frog. I mean, I don't personally see it, but I would have called them an embryo frog since they more look, look like a fleshy embryo to me, but maybe turtle frog is better. There are a few proposed reasons for their weird gelatinous form, uh, and only some of the reasons are correct. I don't know which ones though. One idea is their lack of genetic diversity. Guys found more inland have a, a lot more genes in common with each other, suggesting inbreeding potentially. What do you get when you have an animal with a lot of inbreeding? You already know the answer to this. You get pugs, banded mongooses, white lions, weird zebra stripes. Low genetic diversity makes animals more susceptible to genetic defects or illnesses, so watch out. Now, some animals pref prefer inbreeding for mates because, well, sometimes the only member of your species of the opposite sex within a several mile radius is... you get the point. But, at the same time, there are some animals that have evolved the resilience to the not good parts of inbreeding, like common fruit flies and bed bugs. Uh, could the turtle frog be a species with a resilience to inbreeding? Not sure, but we do know that there is very little in terms of genetic diversity for the species, but we also don't have any documentation of genetic defects in the wild populations. So, cool. Herm, but that's only one idea. Uh, some say that they look all weird and fleshy because they don't need tough skin to be burrowing around all day. Kind of like naked mole rats, uh, usually darker skin is evolved in species that spend longer amounts of time in the sun because more melanin makes animals less susceptible to sunburns or skin diseases. Uh, th they still get them sometimes, but they provide better security than less melanated skin. So if you're fossorial or an animal that spends its life underground most of the day, then you'll do fine with fragile, lightly colored skin. That's likely why they're they're so jelly, though. Uh, they can fit in tight spots and squish themselves all and and roll around and stretch. They're like if slime was a vertebrate. Welcome to Herp Corner, the the species where we delve into the more weird species of reptiles and amphibians. I'm your friend today, Everest. Today we will talk about the weird digging guys. They're called turtle frogs. On the topic of digging, have you ever seen a frog dig with their head before? No, not me. A turtle frog use their strong hands and head to burrow in substrate, kind of like how humans would probably burrow if they were built for that. Most burrowing frogs use their butt to dig. They, they wave around their floppy legs and throw up dirt. This is why, anatomically, turtle frogs have those weird burly muscles in their arms. A lot of people say that they look jacked. Yeah. The, they're supposed to. Those arms are built for making these big burrows, uh, spanning at most 1.2 meters underground. They spend a majority of their time by termite nests. A single adult male turtle frog can eat up to 400 termites within a single setting. Save some for the rest of us, you glutton! They, they forage for termites underground and dig into the termite mounds from below to prevent predators from catching them. Uh, they go where Australian termites go, and that means sometimes in the desert. They love sandy soil, since it's the easiest for them to dig through. It's a weird fact though, since turtle frogs are, are frogs. Frogs usually like humidity and rain, and that's true for turtle frogs as well. Uh, they can't stand the white hot Australian desert sun, so they just don't deal with it. Turtle frogs look for a nice clear spot, ideally one that's close to some tasty termite mounds, and start digging. They don't stop until they're three feet below the ground. That's where they stay, snacking on termites and just huddling until it's time to party. And that time to party comes around during the rainy season, woohoo! When it pours, turtle frogs all come out of the ground and start getting a little frisky. Uh, that's if there is enough of the opposite sex nearby though. Their populations are not dense at all leaving males in the rain calling out to females for upwards of two months before they get a response. But when they finally do, hoo boy! The males take the females back down into his burrow, where the female lays upwards of 50 eggs, each about 7 millimeters in diameter. Inside of each egg, the baby turtle frogs go, th go through their entire metamorphosis without ever breaking the shell. They have a tadpole stage in life, but it's not- it, but it's all internal. When they emerge, 
they emerge fully formed as toadlets. It wouldn't really make sense for them to come out all fishy-like, like normal tadpoles, because, well, the eggs aren't laid underwater. Why? I know why. It's because if the frogs did lay eggs in the temporary pools during rainy season, the pools would dry up and rainy season would end before the babies can grow legs. Uh, and then all of the babies would just die before, would, would just die when, when it all dries up. Having their entire metamorphosis take place in the safety of the eggs, three feet underground is efficient for their survival and maximizes their chance at it. The only other frog species I can think of that have a similar thing going on would be the peepa peepa toad, where the eggs develop inside of the mother's back, where they have their metamorphosis until they're fully formed toadlets and dig themselves out through her skin. Uh, turtle frogs have a much more conventional approach by comparison. The IUCN Red List labels turtle frogs as least concern. Turns out, they have quite large population numbers stretching from Albany to Kalbari. Good for them. Uh, a little birdie, more, more specifically a yellow-faced honey eater, told me that the turtle frog population numbers will be just fine. The IUCN says their numbers are at a stable trend forward, and that this species is hardy enough to survive anything. That's refreshing. In my humble onion, it's probably in part because of their egg-cellent metamorphosis and safe burrows. As far as I'm aware, th there is little interaction between turtle frogs and their local cultures, but there are a few different names for them. Aside from turtle frog, they're also called the tortoise frog, and their scientific name, Myopatrachus goldi. Their specific epithet, goldi, is in reference to the biology illustrator John Gold, or John Gould. Um, Myobatrachus, their genus, has no other members. This is weird. Uh, this makes them weird. U usually genuses have like 10 other creatures in it, but nope, uh, just turtle frogs. Myobatrachus is made of the ancient Greek word myo, which means muscle, and batrachian, which is in reference to the suborder of amphibians batrachia, which is frogs. Uh, very nice, very cool. Thank you. But, uh, that's, that's kind of it. Uh, we, we don't really have any other names for this animal. I mean, the Australian Aboriginal folks in Perth most definitely have a name for them. We just don't know what it is because, well, I'm, I'm not sure. The various Aboriginal cultures of Australia always have some cool cultural significance be behind these various weird guys that live there. But for turtle frogs, it seems nobody asked. One day, I hope someone does ask. At the very least, we know they're called the turtle frog and that they're doing okay in Australia in terms of population. Uh, turtle frogs are a species that adapt well to all urbanization that goes on in Australia, or at least most. Out of sight, out of mind. They spend most of their lives underground anyways. It's very wonderful. Thank you, turtle frogs, for just being yourself. That's all I know about the turtle frog. Shout out to the turtle frog. Can somebody get the turtle frogs on Joe Rogan? Okay, that's gonna be all for me for today. Thank you for sticking with me this long. Or uh, like and subscribe if you like beasts. If you know, if if you know a guy we should cover, mention them in the comments. Thank you. See you next time. Okay, bye.